It's been an interesting journey in Tennessee, to say the least, and I've been fortunate to be there um, from the beginning of our Race to the Top grant um, to today, and it's been about five years since we started some of these reforms. Um, and I think stepping back just a minute before I tell you a little bit about the evaluation story in Tennessee, I, mean, I think in hearing all my colleagues up here on the panel, um, it really is at its core teaching um, is about a teacher connecting with students. And I think if we get that piece right in the classrooms across our state and across the nation, then we go a long way mm -hmm. towards uh, seeing results uh, that we can be proud of for mm -hmm. students that give them real opportunities in life. Uh, but if we ignore what's happening in our classrooms and we, we pretend that we can <coughs> change the desks and move the curriculum and, and play with the other sort of elements in the system but not give real attention to teachers and the supports they need to do instruction well for students every day in every classroom, then we're never gonna see the kind of results that we need to be globally competitive. Um, so in Tennessee, we focused on that from the beginning of this reform work and said, you know, our, our bargain is that if we think about teaching and learning as the teacher and, the, and the, the students being the nucleus of our system, then let's start with that and build from there. Um, and that meant getting serious about teacher performance. Um, it's hard to support teachers if you don't know how they're doing in the classroom and what instruction looks like from classroom to classroom. And so really thinking about sort of that left cornerstone of the TAP system um, as our first step as a state in terms of scaling reform work that we thought would really drill down to teacher effectiveness. Um, and that meant giving teachers feedback on their performance regularly, using a common language through the TAP rubric, which we were fortunate enough to, to partner with NIET to get their support and, and use their resources early on to do training at scale of evaluators that first summer. We trained over 7,000 evaluators on the TAP rubric in four-day trainings that culminated in a, an assessment you know, to see whether when they watched lessons if they could norm against this rubric and really understand deeply what high instruction um, when done well looked like. And then go out in classrooms and actually put that into play. And that first year, as Lowell knows, and many of you, if you were paying attention at all back in 2011-12 school year, it was loud. Um, again, I, I heard some folks say, I mean, this is, um, change is hard in any industry. I think in education, it's excruciating sometimes because we don't do enough of it often. Um, and so that first year was really difficult. We had changed the name of the game for principals, first and foremost. Their job description fundamentally turned on a dime from being about buses and ball games and sort of some of those traditional responsibilities to really being forced to be in classrooms because all of our teachers under a law that was passed in a special session ahead of the Race to the Top grant required every teacher to be evaluated every year and that meant multiple observations for every teacher in our system. So again, that first year was difficult. Um, the governor stepped in and, and said, you know, we're gonna not roll this law back mid-year, you know, because the legislature was threatening to do that. Teachers were upset, principals were not sure what they were doing, uh, looking for help wherever they could find it. And, and said, we're gonna listen. So we did, we, we did some significant listening tours. We partnered with different groups within the state to make sure we could really get out and hear from teachers, hear from educators, find out what was working, find out what needed to be changed in the system. Because we said from the beginning, evaluation systems, no evaluation system is perfect. We're gonna be about continuous improvement um, in this system, just, just as much as the system is designed for continuous improvement in the classroom. So after that first year, doing a lot of listening, um, taking a lot of blows, we put out a first year report that really tried to reflect back to the public and to our educators what we'd heard and what changes we were gonna to make to the system based on what we were hearing. And then we did that, we made those changes. And um, about that time, our student results came in and they were, um, we saw the most growth that we'd ever seen in our state tests. Uh, and then the NAEP results came back and similarly, as you saw, we saw some significant growth. And, and this was with our existing teacher population. You know, This was about giving the teachers that we had in the system more feedback and more of a sense of what the common language around effective instruction should look like and, and um, really breaking down those barriers that often exist in terms of the siloed classroom experience. So since then, um, it's been, again, an interesting journey. We, we've focused the conversation and it shifted pretty quickly after that first year um, about whether or not to do evaluation uh, to how to do it better. And, and that was a pretty fundamental shift, not if we do it, but how we do it. And so we've been working with teachers to build out additional growth measures that we feel show something significant about student impact on student learning. We've been looking at student surveys as another element that really capture uh, the student voice and the student perspective. They're in the classroom day in and day out and can tell us some really uh, important things about what's happening in terms of rigor and challenge. Um, and so really trying to refine our system so that the data that we're generating through the evaluation system can then in turn 
um, affect a lot of the other initiatives that we want to take on as a state to, conti to continue to see this growth. Because let's be honest, we've made growth, but we are still in the bottom half of states in Tennessee, and we're not content with that. So thinking about teacher prep and how do we reflect data back to them so that we know which institutions are getting it right and, and have the right blueprint for, for teacher success and, and teacher preparation. Compensation systems and teacher leadership, I mean, all of those are driven by having data that you feel like is telling you something real about teacher performance. So really starting with that and then building from our evaluation system has been um, important to the progress we've seen.